Hello, my name is Amanda West and I'm the Assistive Technology Coordinator at Empower Abilities. Thank you all for joining my blind and low vision iPhone workshop training. Today, we've got a lot of information to go through. We can take breaks as we like. I do wanna let everyone know that we will be filming. Um, it will mostly be me, so don't be nervous. Um, and I will be moving around from time to time, try to move the camera with me, but that may not be possible. So just bear with me in whatever I demonstrate off screen, I will come back and demonstrate on screen. We've got a great group here today. Okay. I know how to, I get that easy enough. And then at the top, there's a little bit, you know, the line. And so I, uh, okay, everyone, I'd like to go ahead and get started. I know everyone's really excited, meeting new people, talking about what you already know. Um, <laughs> I apologize that you are maybe not going to be, those of you that can may not be able to see me. We're actually filming this session for sharing with the other centers so that they can more effectively train their staff on how to use the devices. What different devices do we have here in the room? One notification, settings, so 9.26 p.m. Software update will be auto-installed. Let me take Siri outside, I'll be right back. Bad Siri. <laughs> so what devices do everybody have? I have an iPhone 7 Plus. Okay. And I have a 7 Plus. I have a 10. I have an 8. I have a 10. 7. I still have 6. We need, to, we need to take care of that for you. I know. I work for the state. I can't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> Hugh, what, uh, what model are you using? Eight. Eight. Do we have anybody that does not have a device at all? Okay, I've got devices that you can use. I got an old one. I don't, I don't even know what it is, but it's... Is it small? I think that's probably a six. All right, so I just kind of wanted to get an idea of that. Um, some of the devices don't have home buttons and that's kind of confusing to a lot of people. Some of them, the power button is on a different location um, on the phone. So we'll kind of get into that with, you know, when you have questions regarding your specific phone, then I'll come over and do the one-on-one. -on -one. I'd like to introduce you to Miss Dottie B. She is a wonderful helper for me. She has taught me a lot about voiceover, and so she's really an asset to this group. I, I, am, I am sight impaired, so you know. I do encourage all of you to make connections today to use some peer support. Peer support is a, a really, really important part of what we do here, so make those connections. Make some connections with Dottie if she's willing to share. She can help you with a lot of your more advanced settings on your phone. So first things first, um, I'd like to talk about operating systems. Operating systems get very confusing to a lot of people. Um, and iOS is the operating system that you're going to have on your iPhone. Basically, this is the interface that runs all of the programs in your phone. If this were a computer, it would be something compared to Windows Vista, Windows 7, Windows 8. So when you use a PC, those are your operating systems. So with your current phone, with the iPhones, we're on operating system 12, so iOS 12. I will be going over at the end of the session about all of the really exciting accessibility features that are gonna be coming out on iOS 13. I think it's gonna be a real game changer. It's a very long list. It should come out in September. Keep in mind that anytime there are updates, there's gonna be a few glitches, especially when it's a massive update. And this is the largest iOS update I've ever seen in my life. And I've been doing this for a long time. So um, it's, it's gonna be massive, but there's always glitches when the operating systems first come out and they will send you updates. So those are usually bug fixes and things like that. So if it's not, when you update in September, if it's not working perfectly, just be patient. They'll send out more bug fixes. 
I know that a lot of us want our phones to do everything and we want them to do things that we just think that they automatically should, but be kind and loving to the engineers that create these phones. The, the process of going into the code writing and the testing to, to create all of these updates and all these amazing features takes time and it takes practice. So bug fixers, bug fixes will be coming out um, as we go along once we operate, uh, once we transition to iOS 13. Now I wanna talk about your SIM card. There's a lot of confusion about what a SIM card is. We're used to like a lot of Android phones and things like that that have SD cards um, and that stores data like photographs and things like that. Your SIM card is your phone service. So you receive your SIM card from your telephone operator, from your carrier, and that is your phone service. Then you have storage in your phone. Um, your SIM does not store data, but your phone has internal data. If you receive phones on the TAP wireless program, your storage is typically going to be 256 uh, gigabytes. So that is a great deal of storage and we're really lucky on the telecommunications access program that we get so much storage with our phones. I continuously run, ran out of storage until I finally got a 256 gig, um, gig phone. So, but there's another thing with storage. Um, it's built into your phone, but with your device, you automatically get, I think five gigabytes of iCloud storage. That's not going to store a whole lot and you'll start getting messages that you need, you're running out of space, you need to upgrade your storage plan and those come at a cost. Um, you can get, I think, 50 extra gigs of storage for 99 cents a month. You have to pay for them. Um, I've had to even increase from there, so I'm paying something like $2.99 a month. But there is another way to store your data, your contacts, your phone numbers, all of those things, and that's in iTunes. So you can either back up to the cloud, and that's gonna be your iCloud storage, which you will run out of, or you can set up an iTunes account on your computer, and then when it's time to back up, you plug your iPhone into your computer, and it will back everything up to your computer. So I know a lot of people really worry about losing their phone numbers and their photographs and all of those things. I'm a, I'm a photo hoarder, <laughs> so I have to have a lot of storage. I have a grandson that I adore and he's gonna just fill my phone. I already have 9,000 photos in there, so. Oh, but you can get that free storage through iTunes. So just by plugging it into your computer and backing up. You're going to want to back up your phone frequently. So I, I would say, iCloud will back it up automatically, but you're going to want to, if you're gonna use iTunes, back it up frequently because if something happens to your phone and everything that's currently on it is not backed up, you're gonna lose that and there's no way to recover it. So, um, like I said, with the TAP wireless phones, the storage is pretty high and that's just really awesome. Um, if you go to iCloud and look, look on your computer, then you can all, always find all of your contacts and all of those things. Yes? Two questions. Uh, is there a charge for this iTunes thing? No. no that's, that's free? iTunes is free. And you can just install it on your computer. Okay. And this TAP, what is this TAP Wireless program? TAP Wireless is a state program. It's the Telecommunications Access Program for Wireless Devices. So individuals with a hearing, visual, cognitive, or mobility impairment who make under $60,000 adjusted gross income a year and are full-time Missouri residents can qualify for a free iPhone from the state. So it would be essentially a $2,000 phone that you would get for free. It would be under warranty for three years and then you could obtain a new one in three years and still keep the old one um, although they prefer it if you return them.
Does that cover that? Yes, it does. Thank you. Very welcome, and you can absolutely see me to do an application for an iPhone if, if you feel like you're eligible. What's next? <laughs> I had to write some notes last night. So now let's go into some basic information. And that is going to be powering on and off your phone. Does everybody know how to do that? Yes. Okay. We all good on that? Okay. Perfect. Yes. Yes, you can. So I have a lot of people ask, is there a way to decline or just silence calls when you're ringing and it's an inconvenient time? And one way to do that is just click on your power button and it will silence the call. So oh, okay. if you don't want to be disturbed, if you want to decline the call, you click that home button or that power button twice. Okay. Oh, okay. Another thing with your power button is if you click it five times fast <laughs> or if somebody clicks it five times fast in an emergency, which we can go in and set up this feature for you, but you can click it five times fast and you can either do an emergency call, power your phone off, or somebody can access your medical ID. I highly suggest using the health app and putting in all of your emergency contacts and that way, if somebody finds you, then they can hit that button five times and they can't access any of your data, but they can access your emergency calls and call them right from there, okay? This is a really wonderful feature, especially in this day and age. If you don't set it up in the app to where it, um, can do the emergency call or access your contacts, then you will accidentally dial 911. Oh. <laughs> we have someone in the room with experience with that. So, and actually I didn't have my new phone set up like that. So I dialed 911 several times. <laughs> One thing, yes. Is, that, is it a separate app for that? The health app is pre-installed in the phone. Yes. I'll say that again in front of the camera. The health app is free installed in the phone, pre-installed. So, yes, Sue? Um, also, you need to know that if you press your volume up and your power and hold it for six seconds, you will dial 911. Oh. Okay. I if didn't you see have an that. Eight or later. If you have an eight or later. Eight or later, okay. Yeah. Amanda? Yes. Are you gonna walk us through how to do that or is that something we just kind of research on our own later? Uh, we, we can if we have time. Okay. Um, if not, we'll just meet one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. I will have time for questions afterwards. Okay. I know some people might wanna leave early, but I'll have time for that. And you can always make an appointment with me and come in and see me. I'll come to see you and we'll go through those features. Okay. Yes, Rachel? Oh, no, no, I was just doing this. I wasn't actually. Oh. <laughs> I was just part of the way that I. I get it. I said, sorry. You're <laughs> fine. So, a lot of people will start complaining about their phones are being a little bit glitchy, and maybe some apps aren't working right, or some features not working right. Your best, the where you need to start for troubleshooting with that is turn your phone off, leave it off for a few seconds, and then turn it back on, and that will resolve most issues. Um, I will be giving you the numbers to the Apple Accessibility Support Services, so if you have even deeper questions, you can contact them and ask them. Yes, Dottie? The numbers she's talking about, those people are wonderful. If I have a problem, I call them, I have them, I just hit <laughs> my apple home and i tell them what my problem is i can even screen share with them and they'll walk me through it until i've learned that step so that i can do it uh -huh. so don't be afraid to uh, to call them or anything because they're trained to deal and help handicapped people and they're really really can articulate that you can't see how you can understand how to do it correct 
I will say also, if you receive a phone through Tap Wireless, it's under warranty with them for three years, so should something happen and it needs repairs, you would call them and not Apple for that. So don't take it into your cell phone provider, don't take it to Verizon, T-Mobile, AT&T, Cricket, any of those places because they are not trained in the accessibility features of the phone. Yes, Wade? Um, okay. So we talked about volume control. Your volume buttons are gonna be on the left-hand side of your device. Uh, the top one is up, the bottom one is down. That's pretty easy to do. Um, who has a home button on their phone still? Yeah, I do too. Okay. So your home button is, I kind of think of it as my escape key. So if you're in an app or a screen and you want to just go back to your main screen, just press your home button and it'll take you right back home. Okay. Yes. Does that close the app you are on or just go away from it? It doesn't close the app, but I'm going to teach you how to close the app in here just a little while. Yes, Boone. The, the, home, the home button, are you talking about the circle on the screen at the bottom? Yes, okay. yeah. That. I consider that, it's the home button. I consider it the escape key. Um, it can turn Siri on for you if you don't have Hey Siri activated. Mm -hmm. It can turn that on for you. All my devices are gonna go off right now because I just said <laughs> <laughs> the, the words. <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, who's using Hey Siri? <laughs> me. I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need anything. Thank you. You don't? No. Oh, you don't. No, thank you. She does talk back to you. I don't know what she's doing now. So, Siri can do a lot of things for you. The Hey Siri gives you, um, you know, hands free access. So you would go into your settings and then you scroll down until you find Siri and it's going to give you a bunch of different prompts. So you'll click on Siri and you can access, you can say, you know, allow Hey Siri so that it will do that for you. But, um, <laughs> huh? Oh, yes. We're going to talk about voiceover, and that's how you're going to access your phone if you don't have any vision at all. Yes, Boone? The Hey Siri you hollered out just a moment ago, was that to your phone or was that to somebody else's? That was to my phone. Okay. It will only Sorry. recognize my I'm not voice. Sure I okay, right, that's it's my her phone voice. Too. Yeah. I, in other words, my wife has a Hey Siri, but I can't get in on it. Is there a way you can set it so you can do a number of voices for it? Or is that a question you might it's really because apple is so strict about privacy think, sure. it's going to be tuned to your voice <clears throat> okay. so i could go up to anyone's phone and say hey siri and it would not activate it yep. <laughs> it's a mess <laughs> but hey siri can do a lot for you siri is your virtual assistant and you can use siri to make phone calls make text messages, read and respond to emails, um, set reminders, set alarm clocks for you, make lists for you. There's a huge list of what Siri can do, but one of the things when you have that activated, you can actually just go in and say, hey Siri, hey Siri. Okay, for you. She's too close to my Siri, that's the problem. Hey Siri. I might need to turn my phone off. <coughs> hey Siri. Now they're not just not working at all for me. But you can go in and you can ask Hey Siri. I think I think they know that I'm tricking him. I don't know what that means. <laughs> if you like, I can search the web for. I think, I think I know that I'm tricking them. <laughs> Cancel. Hey, Siri. 
What kinds of things can I ask you? So you can ask it to make a phone call, FaceTime, launch apps like photos, send messages, Apple Pay, set up calendar meetings, get a quick translation, do quick conversions, look up the sports team that you love, um, find your latest trip to Italy or wherever you may have been in photos, uh, scan a QR code, give you directions, find, uh, actually make reservations for um, restaurant reservations, find political thrillers or other movie, movie um, sorry for all the ums, my professor in high school would have killed me for that. Um, ask her to play music, set reminders, send emails, ask the weather, check the stocks, set your alarm clocks, ask what your friend's address is. You can do find my friends by saying something like where's Brian or where's Dottie. You can send notes. You can um, turn on airplane mode. You can turn on voiceover. You can turn on different things like that. It can search the web for you. It can do um, ask you how many ounces are in a gallon or something like that. It'll play Apple Books for you, podcasts, find your devices and show your passwords. And that's just the tip of the iceberg with what Siri can do. Um, sticky keys are one of my favorite parts in accessibility because some individuals, as we age, we kind of lose some feeling in our fingertips. Maybe our fingertips are really cold or really wet and they won't really acknowledge or sometimes you know just you just have a hard time tapping and can't get it to acknowledge what you're tapping and so there's a really cool feature in your accessibility settings called sticky keys and so if you have that issue then you can hit sticky keys and it'll actually make it stick so it kind of helps it to, to stick in a little better um, and then there's also a magnifier function on your phone in accessibility settings and I think there's a shortcut. I have a, I have a 10s so I'm not sure how that's going to work but let me see what buttons I'll have to triple click. I know that one. Yes. You have to use your power button, click it three times and if you have zoom set up and voiceover and in birth brightness it'll give you a list that you can open. You cannot open zoom with Siri, which no. doesn't make any sense to me. Sue needs to be teaching this class. <laughs> okay, let me get this stuff on and see if it gives me the list. Okay, so. There's my list. So, yes, I had to get everything turned on. New phone, so I haven't had everything set up and I was frantic last night. So now I've got my options for voiceover, magnifier, or cancel. So I've got my magnifier, which basically takes me to my camera. And that way I can look at a document and even take a picture of it and zoom it in. So that's pretty pretty handy there. But there's another feature called Zoom. When you take the picture, will it read it? Does it have character recognition? You, then we would look into, it doesn't have optical character recognition yet, but then we would go into an app like Seeing AI. Okay. No, but we can put Seeing AI on it, and that's really probably my favorite top of the line app for OCR and it also does handwriting which is pretty amazing that's pretty new so you'll show us that. I will show you that I will walk around and we'll do it one by one okay I'm gonna do it on the camera really fast so uh, everybody else can see on that I'm sending this to so we go to settings we're gonna go to general general accessibility we're gonna that's where we can turn on voiceover that's where we can turn on zoom and to activate zoom you triple tap with two fingers and then it increases the size and you can zoom in and out you 
you can also go to your magnif magnifier and turn that on or off, and then your display accommodations. So some people see white on black easier, so you can invert your colors, and that is under display accommodations, so you can turn that on and off. There's a smart invert, and so it will invert your background, but it won't invert your photographs. So when it first came out, it inverted everything. So all the photographs in there ended up looking like a negative. <laughs> and you can also turn on different color filters. So some people feel, see, easy, see different color patterns easier. Um, so you can do those adjustments. You can reduce your white point if you want. And then there is another um, way to speak your screen. It's called speak screen. And what that does is when you swipe down from the top of your screen with two fingers. <coughs> speak selection off. A speak button will appear when you select text. Speak screen on. Swipe down with two fingers from the top of the screen to hear the content of the screen. Highlight content off. Highlight content as it is spoken. Typing feedback. Plus. Speaking rate. So I really like that feature, even for myself. Um, underneath speech, we've got large text and bold text, so you can increase your font to a really great size. Um, to something like this, where you can maybe read it a little bit easier. And again, I'm gonna walk around individually and show you all of this. It's just hard to do it when I'm trying to film. <laughs> You can also turn on bold text so that you can see your text a little bit uh, bolder, darker. Makes the letters thicker. Makes the letters stand out a little better. And then for those of you that use Braille with freshable displays, darn it. Oh, I know what I did. I have to go back to my regular. Here we go. I have to go back to my regular font so that I can actually see everything that I'm doing on the screen. <laughs> I know. This, this great vision of mine, darn it. It's not all it's crapped up. I can hear you. It's not all it's crapped up to me. <laughs> so um, there is a setting where you can um, turn on Braille if you use a refreshable Braille device. Um, the rest is really switch control. Uh, that's for people with uh, mobility impairments. Um, things like that. Let me see. You can reduce the motion, so your screen, your your home home screen, will actually, if you notice, certain certain of the backgrounds will move, and that kind of bothers some people. And so you can actually turn off that motion. You can increase contrast. You can turn on button shapes and things like that. So that's really really helpful. I have a lot of people who are very, very opposed to voiceover. And I try to explain that you need it. You are blind and you need to have voiceover. That's, that's built in so you can operate your phone effectively. Um, but some people are still a little apprehensive about that. And I've had a lot of people ask, how are there alternate ways that you can answer your telephone without being able to see and use voiceover. So one way you can do that, all of your phones come with a headset, with a little earbuds, with a microphone. So you can answer your phone by pressing that microphone button once. That's a very easy way. Or you can use a Bluetooth earpiece and just tap your earpiece and then it will answer the phone for you. And there's another way that a lot of people are not interested in, and I understand why, but it's auto answer. 
So this answers all calls automatically, whether you want them to or not. So I know very few people, if any, who actually use that feature. So, um, but then, you know, we're gonna talk about voiceover for a bit. So when you have voiceover on, it's a little more difficult with my phone since I have no button. Turn on voiceover. Okay, I turned on voiceover. So, if I call, if somebody calls me, when I have voiceover on, which I'm about to do. That again. So what I'm going to do to answer the call is take two fingers and tap on my screen twice. To hang up the phone, I'm going to do the same thing. Repeating it? Maybe. There we go. I tapped my phone screen with two fingers twice, and that hangs up the phone. Okay? Thank you. You're welcome. For those of you that, that do use voiceover, that will be helpful. So. I gotta get a couple things turned off. I got a lot going on right now. Okay. So, to hang up also, if you click the button, your uh, power button three times, it will also turn it off. It will um, hang it up for you. Does anybody have questions yet? <laughs> yes. Did, uh, was it Great. Did I did I see and Sue say you cannot use the Zoom with the voiceover? No, you can use the Zoom with the voiceover. Carol, you can't turn on, you can't say, hey Siri, turn Zoom on, Okay. which I find annoying. Yes, I certainly do use Zoom and voiceover at the same time. Yeah, you yep. But you can, you can ask Siri to turn on voiceover. So, because some people don't want it on all of the time. It's a little bit of a bear to get through, um, but I think with a lot of practice, you can definitely do it. Does anybody want to take a quick break to go to the restroom, get a snack? Okay, I have to take a quick break. <laughs> <laughs> You'll go into your notes app. Yeah, you have a notes app. Yeah, that is what it will do for you. I use notes. Me too. I do all that. It's like, remind me. Hey, Siri. Double tattoo. Oh, it's the same. Oh. It's the same. So. Mm -hmm. Does everybody have voiceover on their devices? Yes. Okay. Let's go ahead and we're going to talk about using voiceover. You want to turn it on? Yes. Okay. We'll be doing practices of using voiceover is you'll notice that you can tap any icon on your screen and it will repeat out loud what it is. Phone, messages, notes, reminders. So when you found the app that you want to access, so it says phone, double tap to open. So you'll tap it twice and that will open that app for you. And so when you're going through voicemail and things like that, it'll, you'll, it'll say play, you know, and then you'll tap twice to, to play it. And yes. the nice part of the voiceover is if you just hit an app, it says big Don't magnify it. and it'll tell you double tap if you want to open it. If that's not the one you want, you just move on. 
but it always identifies what it is. Carol. So it's two things. Um, when you after you touch the icon for the app that you want to open, um, you can double tap anywhere on the screen. You don't have to double tap right on. There's going to be a lot of great new editing features, which we'll talk about in iOS 13, um, and that will kind of. I think it's going to make huge differences. So I'm very, very excited. <laughs> yes. How much difference is there between iOS 11 and 12? iOS 11 was kind of groundbreaking. I mean, they they came out with a lot of different fun things like memojis and things like that. They just they just increase the abilities each time. Um, there's not a huge difference between iOS 11 and 12, but there's going to be a massive difference between iOS 12 and 13. Yes. So I have an Android builder. I cannot scroll. We're going to get to that. Oh. Yeah. There, it, turning on voiceover entirely, entirely changes the way you interact with your phone. Okay. So we're gonna get into that actually here in just a couple of minutes. So when you have voiceover on, and mine's very fast. Um, when you have that on, if you, if it's going, let's see. <laughs> you can hear that fast? <laughs> you think that fast? That's amazing. <laughs> so if you want to pause the speech, you're going to use two fingers and tap. Hmm. Well, I guess it read it all. Hang on. This is going to be. can start and pause your speech with two taps. I'm not sure why mine's playing music. Technology, what are we going to do with it, right? <laughs> yeah, it's turning on my music. Oh, nice music at least. Thank you. All right. <laughs> you know, the idea when we were for a while, while it's talking to touch the screen twice and it stops and then you can touch it again another another two times it starts again. Ideally. Okay. Ideally. <laughs> but right now mine's playing music and I have no explanation for that. <laughs> so it's what's what's first message. So it's right. not my age, huh? That I have problems with this phone. No. <laughs> I feel so much no. better. When mine. we were doing voicemail, um, I didn't have any voicemail, but I wanted you to know you can just talk to it and say, please read me voicemail, and it will read it out to, out loud to you. You don't have to manually touch it. Oh, okay. But it only does that with, with unread, because I stepped out to try it, and I pulled a message that I had deleted back into undeleted, and it would not read it to me. Mm -hmm. Well, hmm. well that's to interesting that. to know, but it, it will read any ones that I haven't read right. today. Right. That's pretty cool. So another really cool feature that the Double Tap has to offer is if you're in your keyboard, if you double tap twice, rather than having to find that tiny microphone icon, if you double tap, tap twice, it will start instant dictation. Very good. Yeah, did you tap 
If you are in an app where you're using your keyboard, if you double tap, it will start instant dictation rather than oh, having to try to find that little microphone. Anywhere on the screen? Or on the Dottie, anywhere on the screen? Uh, on the, I just always tap the, the keyboard, but okay. um, I think you can tap anywhere on the screen or any voiceover. No, okay. I use the dictation all the time, but most of the time I, I hit the little mic, but I usually just double tap on the keyboard and the dictation comes on. But that applies only to the voice if you have voiceover on, you're saying? Yes. Or will mm -hmm. that also do it if you don't have voiceover? No. No, if just voiceover. If you don't have voiceover on, you can use the dictation though. Yeah. But you have to actually hit the dictation. Yeah, the little button. microphone. Okay. And what I've had happen if I double tap above my keyboard, mm -hmm. I play a lot of music on my phone and I would start a song. I'm like, I'm not asking you to play a song. <laughs> so you need to double tap down at the bottom half of On, your phone. Of where the keyboard is. Yeah. yeah, even if you can't see the keyboard, you want to think about your phone being cut in half from, you know, um, horizontally. So double tap your bottom half. Thank you, Sue. That's, I think, actually something that I took out because I didn't want to overwhelm everyone. We will be offering this session again as well. Yes. No. I assume it's kind of like a computer where you got to do various apps in it. But on my computer, I can uh, I can use a keyboard where I can hit if I want something starts with N. Uh, since I don't know where the apps are, I don't know where N is on the keyboard. Um, can I say to voice voiceover that I, I want a particular app and it'll open that app? You can ask Siri. Siri will open. Yes, Siri and VoiceOver are different. All right. So right. Siri is your voice assistant, your your AI assistant, and VoiceOver is your. Let's get you Do I have to close out of VoiceOver then to no. tell Siri to open? No. no. Nope. So that they they will operate together. They will. Yes. Okay. So another thing, so with VoiceOver, um, you can toggle your speech on and off. So if there's times you don't want it to be turned on. So you take three fingers and you double tap. That turned my voiceover off. <laughs> Your phone timed out. My phone is mad at me, apparently. <laughs> I use it too much. There we go. Three finger double tap. Okay. There, that's me. You have three music. Okay. <laughs> She's got the bedtime music. It's Chopin. I love Chopin. Okay. So, yes, I will give you all printed copies of these. Um, and you can go over them. I My phone is being squirrely today, so I apologize for that. I just updated it. Um, do you have the documents in Braille? I do not, but I can give them to you in a Word document. Do you use a screen reader or a refreshable Braille? No. I'll take them and print the skin. Okay. Hmm. All right. So a tr three finger, often you're gonna find whenever you're using your phone, it's gonna go black after a while when you're using voiceover. And that's what's called a screen curtain and it's for privacy. Um, so see, my screen curtain has come on. I, I'm sorry, I say see. Um, my screen curtain has come on. So I'm going to take three fingers and triple tap it and it's not gonna cooperate. And there we go. <laughs> now my screen is back on, but I can turn it back off again. running into troubles when it has to be video. <laughs> All right. Swiping. Swiping is a challenge when you're using voiceover. 
I don't know if anybody has noticed, um, but it took me a really long time that when you want to swipe, you have to actually apply, apply pressure. So most of us are used to just swiping and not having to, you know, think about it, but you actually have to apply pressure to your screen whenever you're doing that. So, Okay, so swiping left or right is gonna select your next or previous item. So if I'm in an app, I can swipe really lightly and it'll take me to the next app. So it'll just keep going through. So when you want to, when you're in an app, I'm gonna look in photos. Maybe I want to swipe up. I'm gonna take, so I'm really having to push to get them to move. So I'm actually applying a lot of pressure there. Three. Good. So, because you can't swipe with one finger. Nope. Only when you are, only when you are using that flick to move between your apps. That's the only time you're really going to be using one finger. What's the difference in a flick and a swipe? A flick, think about flicking a bug. Like this. You're flicking a bug off of your hand. Yep. So, down, you're going to use three fingers. No, my voiceover's not on. <laughs> And you really do have to apply that pressure. Now, pushing your screens up to over. We are now going to talk about your rotor. So, your rotor is. Let me get into something I can get. So rotor is kind of like a dial, a virtual dial that's going to be on your screen. And so you're going to take your fingers, just kind of like maybe your index, middle, pinky, and thumb, and you're going to kind of hold them. How, would you, how do you say you hold your fingers? You okay. use two. Use two? Use two? I use, two. use, two? I use two on the screen. And then I start turning it like a knob. And you just do a one little quarter flick. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, a little quarter turn. You can also do this. Is the rotor an app? No, nope, the rotor is built into the phone. And so that is where you can go in and change your words. Speaking rate, that's a big one. So if you want to slow your speaking rate down, flick. Flick. 84%, You want to increase it? You flat. 
Good. You all good, Dan? Um, yeah, I think. Good. <laughs> I think it's pretty awesome when you're reading like an email or a text message mm -hmm. and you don't understand exactly what they're saying or you're reading directions for something. You can use that rotor to go by sentence, by word, or by letter. That way, if you have an email address and you don't know what letter, like mine is, is crazy cane. And I don't know how many times people have said, is that cane with a, with a C or a K? Well, you can take your rotor to letters and then flick down to move it forward and up to move it backwards. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I have a lot of this in the curriculum that I took out for today, but it will be on the printed okay. information that I give so you. Kind of in advance and you feel more comfortable, you'll have it to try it. Right. Yeah. You just stick your fingers in the middle of the screen. Uh-huh. Just stick them in the middle. So once you, like, once you get into speaking rate, right, how, do you, how do you make it go down? If you want it to go down, you're going to flick down. Oh, so after you after you do the rotor, then you flip. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, you okay. find you go to your rotor, you find speaking rate. If you want it to decrease, you're going to flick down, and that's just a real gentle light. You don't have to do a hard press. And if you want it to increase, you can flick up. So to move between your pages, this took me a long time to learn. Yeah. So this is where you have to use that pressure, and I will go around with each of you and we'll do this. Um, but if you wanna go between pages, you're going to put pressure on your phone, and then just swipe over. Pressure, phone. They do. They do have their artificial intelligence and they do have minds of their own. Um, so, <laughs> I've just got to say, when I have voice over on and I am doing something, all of a sudden they'll say, Dottie, I didn't understand that. And I'll go, I wasn't talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> and if you tell her she's stupid, she'll go, well. Uh -huh. I, I, oh my. <laughs> So for those of you that do have a home button, did you have a question? Okay. For those of you that do have a home button, um, closing your apps out is a really great way to preserve your battery life. And so I probably at the end of the day have about 50 apps open. And so I really need to be closing those. And it's a little bit different with voiceover. So, I, I think I've got five apps open. So you can double click your home button if you have one, and then it'll take you to the app switcher screen. So for the, um, for the phones that don't have the home buttons, that's what I want. I'm going to get more apps open so I can show you. Alright. 
So you're going to, for the, those of you with the home button, you're going to hit it twice and it'll take you to a screen where all the apps show up in rows. And so to access, I have not done this training with a 10. Okay, I got to this a minute ago. Okay, I got it. For those of you without a button, what you're going to do is swipe up from the bottom, put some pressure on with your thumb. So just swipe up. And then your apps are all going to be there. And so you'll just swipe up. You're going to swipe up with one finger. You're going to put some pressure. Swipe up. Swipe up. So that takes you to your, your apps, which are, and then you can close your apps to save your battery. I should have practiced with my phone a little more before I did this. <laughs> I might not be able to do my How do you get rid of if you have a button? Hmm? If I have a button, you can go on there. Okay. Then how do you get rid of it? Yeah, so press your button. Do you see all the apps come up? Press it twice. Okay, so take your thumb. Are you on voiceover? Take your thumb at the bottom, press it. That's, I know how to do that. Okay. No, I yeah. do it with a knife. No. Oh, that was mortifying. <laughs> okay, so that's kind of, those are the basics of voiceover. I will send all of the information that's all thorough with all of those gestures. There's a lot of gestures that a lot of people who are using don't necessarily need. Um, so I will let you all figure that out. If you have, do you need, does anybody need extra large font? I do. Okay. I would love extra large font. Okay. Carol. Oh, you mean on the, on the, on the paper? Um, yeah. Oh, no, I just want regular. Sorry. Okay. I want extra large. I have to have extra large. No, I would have extra large. I would like to have extra large. Extra, extra large. It'll take a while to print. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes, please. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I got you, Grace. Okay. Got you, Wade. If you take this, take two fingers. Okay. Um, I don't use the voiceover, so I don't need any of those papers. Okay. Not a problem. And I, I will also be sending you all with the gesture controls so you can actually see, you know, or if you have somebody that can help you, okay. so you'll know oh, how to do it. Fortunately, we're making excellent time. You will get out of here early today. It'll probably take me more time to print everything. <laughs> but I did want to talk about some applications as well that can benefit you all. Um, how many are you familiar with Text Grabber? Text Grabber is um, an app that you can, it, I think it basically snaps a picture of a document and then it's, it's optical character recognition and so it will convert it into readable text and read it to you. Um, text Grabber? Okay. Are you familiar with it? I've, I've heard of it, I've never used it. Where do it's we find an, it? Um, it's in the App Store. In the App Store. Mm -hmm. And any of you can make personal private appointments with me we can spend an hour in the office just one-on-one -on -one and we can we can do this and learn a little bit more and assist you a little bit more, okay? Um, Was that anything like Seeing AI? Yes, I'm gonna talk about Seeing AI because it's even better. Text Grabber is an optical character recognition app 
that uh, you can take a photo of a document or a PDF and it translate, translates the text and reads it to you. But there's another app called Seeing AI. And what that does, it has optical <coughs> character recognition. It can do short documents for you. It can read long documents for you. It is in beta form, but it can read handwriting, which is really exciting. This is very, very new. It can tell you the lighting in the room. It can tell you the scene of the room you're in. You're in a living room, you're in a bathroom, you're in different places. Um, it'll tell you if there's people standing in front of you. Uh, I think sometimes even their hair color and facial expression. It'll do barcodes, it'll do color. It does a lot seeing AI. Oh. Yeah. I wondered what that was, I know. The instructions good? Huh? Are the built-in instructions good? Yeah. Yeah, I think they are. Yes, yes, it's pretty simple. And if anybody wants to install these apps, just call me if you need help. We'll make an appointment and we'll get you in. Yes, Carol? So do you know if seeing, uh, if seeing AI is comparable to or just as good as the DNFD that we have? I don't have any experience with KFNB, KFNB. I'm sorry, okay. <laughs> reader, because I haven't had any experience with okay. it because TAP doesn't provide it. Okay. Yeah. So, but I think it's just off the charts. Is um, this, can I ask you again what it's called? Is that the Be My Eyes? No, K N F B. Oh, K N F B. It's created by the NFB, but it's an app that costs ninety nine dollars. Mm -hmm. Oh. Well, I'll take the free. I know. That's why I was wondering if the free ones work as well. Yes. I think it does. does what did you call Amanda? Um, do you have to have the, this, what, what, what is that, the speak on? No. Nope. Uh, yeah, you don't have to have voiceover on to access that. But it's okay. Yep. It's so design. what if you just wanted it to, like, read something? CIA? Yeah, you can go to document. Right, yeah, there's a, a menu at the bottom and you just scroll mm -hmm. through until you find what you want. Yes, Wade? I prefer seeing AI. Um, I, I have found Text Grabber more difficult to use over the years. I just wondered if it maybe had its one strength hey, that kind of, that overall the seeing AI might have been better than text has this one thing that does really well. But no, it, and it, it only does one thing. So. Yeah, yeah. No. Okay. And since seeing AI can do handwriting, that's huge. Um, like I said, that's so new. Google Docs, if you have the, yes, go ahead. Voiceover. Voiceover. Voice over. Voice over. Huh? No, no, not that, not that I know of, but you know, they're always adding more features. So another app that I'm really excited about that has OCR in it is, um, Google drive. So if you have a document in Google drive or in Go a Google docs, you, you create a Google docs and then you upload it, upload it to Google drive. It will read it for you as well and it detects handwriting and so those are the two that I know of that do handwriting so um, that's very very exciting as well um, the Google suite is just it's easy to use you can access it everywhere you know if somebody gave you a thank you card you could take a picture of it and put it in Google Docs upload it in the drive and then have it read to you so. right here that's mm -hmm. good. Boone. Yeah, I, I, I could do open Google Assistant. I don't know whether that's the doc or not, but is, are we talking about similar things? Google Assistant is the Android version of Siri. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And you can have that on your iPhone as well. Right. You can ask it, okay, Google, and, and it can do all of, all of those things. Um, but I, I never found the need to have an extra AI. <laughs> so. Okay. Um, another great app is called Be My Eyes. 
I am a registered Be My Eyes volunteer, and what that app is, is you register as, um, I re I'm registered as a sighted user, you can register as a blind user, and then um, basically when you need something identified, you make a call to a volunteer, you never know who's going to answer, and you can hold something in front of your camera and ask for them to identify it for you. And if I may, they are fantastic. They are. They're out of Sweden, and they're awesome. So, um, yes, yeah, yeah. See, yeah. See um, Be My Eyes is amazing, and they have, you know, monthly stories that they release and really cool things, so I love that one. Um, there are also Money Reader and iNote. So with these apps, it uses your camera. You can have Siri open up Money Reader and hold just the corner of a bill in the camera and it will identify what it is for you. I think Seeing AI does that too. Though. Seeing AI does that as well. Is, that, is there a finesse to that though? I'm always so awkward standing there trying to pay for something and going, oh wait, I gotta open that app and stick my dollar bill under it. You know. People three miles away knowing. I know. Right. right. <laughs> the, there's not, for something like that, maybe a, an eye bill would be, you know, more appropriate if you just wanted to get something out quick, slip it in and, you know, because eye bills are really. You can also use that app or your eye bill at home and then organize your money. True. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hold your money, that's true. And, and I'll tell you this, if I use a 20 to pay for something and they give me back change because no one ever counts out change in your hand, I shove whatever change it is into my pocket. I'm extremely weird about anybody seeing me try to figure out what my money is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there's just too many people out there. Yeah. Yes. So I put it in my pocket and then I go home and you can use a CCTV, a seeing AI, a bill reader, any number of ways to identify that money in private. Mm -hmm. That way when I go to Walmart and I want to pay for something, I can pull the money out and be efficient and not feel like, oh dear God, did I pull out a one or a hundred? I, I hold my money the way they showed me um, when I'm in public. The ones are flat, the fives you fold in half, the 10 you fold in half and then again and the 20s fold in half and they're you can feel with your fingers immediately what they are exactly and it mm -hmm. makes it easier when you're in public because that's one thing it is hard to handle money you could give them a hundred dollar bill and they wouldn't right you know so um mm -hmm. most of the time somebody's always with me because my sight's so bad that mm -hmm. I don't really know what I'm buying. We've had some surprises at home sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't have to learn a specific technique to yeah, identify money. Make, make up your own. Season. That's a good idea. Oh, can you? Okay. Or make some count up back to your right. Turn voiceover on. Okay, I turned on voiceover. So. Doc, messages, tap, tap, C. Another app is Tap Tap Tap, tap Rating. Rating. Three stars. Submit. Submit. Dim. Write a review. Button. OK. Button. Repeat. Dim. Button. OK. Say the last picture again. I don't. I don't, I don't know what it is. That, did you say that was Tap Tap C? She's going to. Yes. I'm going to ask her to show me. Ca camera button. Button. Mm -hmm. Double tap to take a photo of what's in front of you. <laughs> Who has experience tap, with Tap Tap C? A little bit. Turn voiceover off. I don't. I've never really been able to get it functioning properly. Sorry, so. but I'm not able to change that setting. <laughs> Turn voiceover <laughs> assisted talk. Assisted. Yeah, it's because I'm, I have a camera in front of me. You jerk! <laughs> settings. 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 Wi Fi. Settings. Turn voiceover off. The, the one thing I heard about Tap okay, Tap so Tap 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 Tap
Not, yeah. Not now, I don't think. Oh, that that they're doing it for free. That's good. They used to do that. Sue, what's your experience with Tap Tap C? Huh, it said picture failed. Because you normally put something in front of the camera and then double tap your screen. Mm -hmm. And it will take a picture of it and identify it. But it, I mean, maybe my glass was too shiny. Maybe you need a label. Oh. You have to be a label or something. Yeah, it said trouble sending image. Mm. So I don't know. Huh. Well, the, they might be having some glitches right now. So again, this is something we can all go over in a one-on-one -on -one basis. I do want to give some reminders about the telecommunications access program for wireless. Um, for those of you have, who have received phones on the program, this is very important and a lot of people forget by the time they receive their devices but you are required to provide your own cellular and data. The equipment is, and the applications are, and the warranty are the only things that are provided. You have to have your own email. So you can't use a spouse's email, you can't use a friend's email, you have to have your own email. And that is something that we can set up for you here. Um, you must check your email for questions and surveys. If you have received a new device, check and respond to all emails so that they can verify receipt of phone and pay for your new phone because we want that. <laughs> we want them to pay for your phone. And then you are eligible for a new device every three years, but it must be functioning at a way that is just simply not usable to you any longer. And Apple only guarantees their phones to last for a year. So, but I carried one for five years and, you know, it, it worked. But if things happen, then, you know, they happen. Uh, you're eligible for a new device every three years from the date, not from the date of the application, but from the date you receive it. If you go to a store like Verizon or AT&T, when you receive your phone, they cannot repair your phone and they are not usually familiar with accessibility features. Mm -hmm. So if you need accessibility help, you can call me or you can call Apple Accessibility. There's the old alarm clock. Do not call Apple for repairs. They don't understand the state program that we operate on. Um, and again, your phone is under warranty for three years with Teltex. So if something happens, you would be calling Teltex. You can call Teltex for all repairs at 888-515-8120, and you can call Apple Accessibility for help at 1-877-204-3930. And for more training, you can go to iaccessibility.com. All of this information will be on your information packet. Now, I want to talk to you about the new operating system that's coming out in February. Yes, Sue. Can I share one more app? Please do. For everyone that's a new accessibility user, this is on your phone. It's called VO Tutorial. Yes. So if you see that and you're like, what the heck is that? Get in there because it's interactive. Well, how do you get to it, though? I've been trying to get to it. You can say... Hey Siri, yeah. open VO tutorial. You don't seem to have an app, do you? Oh, oh, you stupid thing. <laughs> <laughs> the room's possessed by demons. Um, I burned sage and everything. I don't know what's going on. Apparently you can, not enough. You can normally, you can either swipe left and right to go through your apps, does everybody understand that your apps are in a grid pattern? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can swipe back and forth or you can slide your finger back and forth to find the app and then double tap it to open it. Thank you, Sue. Yep. Okay, are you ready to learn about our future operating systems? Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. I haven't learned this one yet. Yeah, I was <laughs> Well, you'll have time, and then the new one will come out, and it's going to be amazing. And when is this supposed to come September. Out? September, okay. Yeah. So I'm going to... I thought you were our, our, 
all of our phones going to be able to have that? Yes. Or are we going to have to have more updated phones? Nope. It will work all the way down to the SE. Okay. Okay. So for one thing, it takes me a bit to scroll through it all. Um. <coughs> so while you're scrolling, can I ask a question? Yes. Okay. For those of you who use the face recognition on your phone, <coughs> that I've, I've heard that that can be a problem for the visually impaired because it's hard for them to line their faces up with the portion of the, the phone that you need to be seen in. Does anyone have any experience with that? Yes. I hate it. Yeah. Because I normally have my phone closer to my face because uh -huh. I'm trying to see it. Right. So if you hold the phone, you know, with the screen towards you, out just about, I mean, you don't have to go arm's length, okay. but you need it to be, oh, what is this, about 20 <coughs> inches from your face? Okay. 15, 20 inches? Then, you know, you can get it to work. <coughs> if you have trouble setting it up, you might need some sighted assistance to set it up because it wants your face in a certain place in that screen. That's why, because I thought, oh, I'll trick it. I'll hold it up closer to me when I set up face ID and it will not allow it because it wants to see both eyes, your nose and your mouth so that it can identify you. Sometimes if I wear sunglasses, it does not recognize me. Oh. So don't be making faces. Well, I, bet that's, I bet that's true for yes. sighted people as well. I will say I've never had an issue with face ID. It's caught me kind of from the side because when you're setting it up, you have to like look a circle multiple times so it catches everything. And I, I like it. Um, I like the security of it. Like I said, I do everything on my phone, um, but you, and when you're holding it up, I mean, after you've got it set up, you don't have to have your face in a specific area. You can just, you just have to from have down your here, face you can, your screen. yeah, you okay. just have to have your face facing your screen, but it's the setup part that, that may be giving you trouble. Okay. So some um, improvements with Siri, she's going to sound more natural than ever, particularly while speaking longer phrases with a voice that is generated entirely by <coughs> software. She's going to offer personalized suggestions in podcasts, Safari, and Maps. She can even detect reminders in your text messages and give you a reminder and, third, and in third-party apps. And so you'll get a reminder notification that you have something coming up. Like, hey, Carol, remember, we've got dinner tomorrow night at 5. You'll get that reminder. I'll be there. <laughs> Excellent. Where are we going? Can I tag along? Yeah, wherever you want to go. Siri's going to pay for it. Siri's paying for it. Siri has the money, not me. All right, it takes me forever to scroll down to accessibility because they always put it at the bottom. <laughs> Would, can Siri find that for you? The, um, the, the accessibility? Not on a website. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm on the Apple website. Okay. We're almost there. Pretty sure we're almost there. How long did it take us yesterday, Wade? Not a while. <laughs> Here we go. A new setting protects users from unknown and spam callers. When the setting is turned on, iOS uses Siri intelligence to allow calls to ring to your phone from numbers in contacts, mails, and messages. All other calls are automatically sent to voicemail. That's a nice feature yeah. for those of us that get robo callers. Um, uh, voice control. Introducing a new way to control your iOS devices entirely with your, with your voice. Accurate dictation. Voice control uses Siri's speech recognition engine to give you 
the latest advances in machine learning for audio to text transcription, whether you're writing a biology report, filling out a legal document, or emailing about a favorite topic, you can add custom words to ensure that voice control recognizes the words you commonly use. All audio processing for voice control happens on your device, ensuring that your data is kept private. Thanks to your rich text editing commands, you don't have to rehearse before you speak. I should have today. <laughs> But making corrections is quick and easy. So when you're sending a text message or an iMessage um, and you mess something up, you can say, try saying replace I'm almost there with I just arrived. Fine grain editing also makes it simple to select, set, select text. Try saying move up two lines, select previous word, capitalize that. Nice. Word and emoji suggestions. If you need to correct a word, simply ask and you'll be presented with a list of suggested replacements. Seamless transmission, transmissions. Seamless transitions from dictation to commands. Voice control understands contextual cues, so you can seamlessly translate between text dictation. For example, say, happy birthday, tap send in messages and voice control sends happy birthday just as you intended you can also say delete that and voice control knows to delete what you just typed the comprehensive navigation you can rely entirely on your voice to navigate an app comprehensive navigation is provided by navigation commands names of accessibility labels numbers grids voice gestures and recorded commands Navigation commands give you quick ways to open apps, search the web, press the home button, and more. Names. You can easily navigate by telling voice control to select the name of an accessibility label for buttons, links, and more. Numbers. You can say show numbers to see numbers appear next to all clickable items on screen. Use this to quickly navigate. Na navigate? <laughs> navigate. <laughs> um, complex or unfamiliar applications. Numbers automatically appear in menus and whenever you need to disambiguate between items with the same name, just say a number to click it. Grids, saying show grids superimposes a grid on your screen and allows you to precisely do things like tap, zoom, drag, and more. Gesture with your voice. Use your voice to perform gestures such as tap, swipe, pinch, zoom, press the home button, and more. Recorded commands. You can record multi-step gestures for apps on your iOS device. So if you love to send messages with fireworks, record the gesture to do this and recording to quickly send messages and fireworks. Attention awareness. With attention awareness, voice control goes to sleep when you turn your head away from, from the true depth camera on an iPhone. If it doesn't activate until you look back at the screen, it doesn't activate until you look back at the screen so you can talk to a friend nearby without affecting your device. <coughs> Optimized battery charging. A new option helps slow the rate of battery aging by reducing the time your phone spends fully charged. Phones learn from your daily charging routine so it can wait to finish charging past 80% until you need to use it. So those are going to be a lot of the really exciting accessibility features in iOS 13. I cannot wait. I will certainly be the first person to install it on my phone the moment I get a chance. And um, then I can kind of work with you all on that. Miranda, do you have to adopt the uh, voiceover in order to take advantage of that stuff? I'm not sure. I'm not sure yet, Wade. I won't know until it comes out and I've had time to, to play with it. <laughs> so... Does anybody have any questions? So I'm gonna go ahead and let you all work on your peer support, and then I will go print these documents for you so that you can all take them home and enjoy them. And please help yourself to more snacks. Yes, Carol. Absolutely. As you know, I'm Amanda West. I'm Dottie B. Tina Marsh. Sue Phillips. Melita Waters. Jim Wickmore. Trevor Pips. Stephanie Chester Bracey. 
Colleen Copeland. And again, I highly encourage you all to connect so you can meet up independently when you don't necessarily need me. Peer support <coughs> is so very valuable. So enjoy. I will be back in an hour because it's going to take a lot to print large print, but we'll get this going for you.